Once again, I thank God for what he has done. I'm giving honor to God for um, my co-pastor, Pastor Cosroy, also to our overseer, Overseer William Brownlee. I'm just thanking God for a new series on today. We're starting it today. It is called Collide. That's the name of this series. And the first, this first week topic is saying, stand firm. Since the beginning of the Christian faith, there has been a collision course taking place. It was headed towards a collision. Reason why? Because God's priorities, uh, his, his values that he has for us, it does not align with what the world's values are. When it comes down to our us setting priorities and what we should do first, second, third, those priorities with the world does not line up with the with God's priorities or what we should put first. So we shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be alarmed whenever we have conflict or we have um, issues, attention dealing with people that are of the world. That is something that we should expect because we know that the things of God does not connect with the things of the world. But what I have noticed that's been happening is many leaders and preachers have watered down the gospel in order to get more people to come their way. Instead of telling people the real truth, they're giving them false truths. Because see, the truth is it has, it's always gonna have some truths in it, but it's going to put something else there to dilute that truth. So anytime you hear a lie, most times it have a it has a part of a truth in it, because that is to convince you to believe what they're saying. You say, Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds pretty close. And so we don't want to be fooled by the things of the world and the, the different um, avenues that they come or that they take in order to convince you to come over here on this side. And so if we don't stand for something, we will fall for anything. And so we, we have to take a stand for truth. Now, I know that a lot of this is very enticing. It's very, it's easy to fall into that trap. Because it does sound good and, and it makes a lot of sense. But then I think about, you know, when you're going hiking, you're going uh, walking on a trail um, and, and which brought me to uh, think about when we went to California uh, to visit, uh, we took this um, hike. We went on this trail going up this mountain. And when we were walking up this mountain, it had a lot of areas that were not even. You know, you had some little potholes and some of it had dirt, some had dust. We had to squeeze through a, a, a rock area. You know, it was just a lot of different spots. It wasn't like a smooth, like a highway, you know, some you just walk straight and you can pretty much see where you're going and, you know, is nothing there. But it was uneven. You didn't know if you're going to break your ankle or, you know, fall off the side. or You didn't know what was going to happen because it was just so rough and and unpredictable. That's pretty much the way life is. It is very unpredictable. You don't know if you're going to you're going to step on a nice solid foundation or if you're going to step on something that's going to cause you to roll over and break your ankle or break your foot or break your hand, break your neck. You don't know what's going to happen the next time because we're living in perilous times right now. And we don't know because what the world have for us, they can have a pitfall waiting for you on the other side. Oh, but when we come to the word of God, glory to God, we know we have a firm foundation to stand on. We know that whatever God have, he is consistent in what he has spoken. He is consistent, glory to God, in what he has for us. I'm so thankful to God. And I hope you have your Bibles, whether it's digital, you got a leather back, you got a hard back, whatever you have, have your word. Glory to God. Let's dig into the word of God on today. We're starting out in Colossians, Colossians 2 and 8. And I'm reading it out of the NIV version. Glory to God. And it reads, these are words of Paul. He says, see to it 
that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elements, the uh, elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than Christ. Now, Paul is warning us about the world's logic and their values. And he wants us to stand firm on a set of values that is not of the world. So even when you choose to stand firm, you're still going to face these difficulties. You're still going to face these choices on what are you going to do? Are you going to stand firm on the word of God? Are you going to be led astray by the philosophers and they smooth talking, their smooth words that they give? Because it sounds so good, so it got to be right. It sounds so smooth because it connects with what I've learned when I was little. Oh, but listen to the whole message. Don't just listen to part of their words and what they're speaking. You need to hear the whole thing. Like they say, see the whole role. Take the whole role with it and then see if it lines up with the word of God. If it does not line up with the word of God, then you need to spear it out. You need to get away from it. You need to run away from it because it is not consistent. It is shifty just like that ground when you're going up that little trail. That's the way the world, glory to God, values are. They have rough patches everywhere. And I have a subtopic that it says, stand firm or fall. So you can stand firm or you can fall. Either way, glory to God. If you stand firm on the word of God, you will not fall. But if you do not, my God, my God, you will fall. Now today, important lesson, glory to God, about the worldly values, they are inconsistent. That is my first point on today. The worldly values are inconsistent, just like that, that ground where you don't know where you're going to sit. Now think about it. The motto of the world, what they tell us all the time, all growing up I've heard this, they say, follow your heart. Do whatever you like to do, whatever your desire is. And they say, do whatever makes you happy. That's what the world tells us. They tell us to do that. But that principle, when you think about it, that is inconsistent and shaky. Why? Because it contradicts with the word of God. That is not what the word of God tells us. In Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Who can understand this world? Now the world tells us, follow your heart. But the word of God tells us that the heart is wicked. So who are you going to listen to the world? Follow your heart. Are you going to listen to the word of God? Don't follow it because it's deceitful. Because when you, when you operate under, under feelings, you operate under your heart, you're going to be deceived every time. He said, who can understand it? Nobody understands. Glory to God. Matthew 10 and 39. He said, whoever find their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake, glory to God, will find it. The world tells you you need to make sure that you're happy no matter what. No matter what it takes, make sure that you're happy. Oh, but Jesus says, hallelujah, if you, lead, if you lose your life for my sake, glory to God. He said, I'll make a trade for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. He said, you will find uh, all deep joy. Hallelujah. When you rest in me, hallelujah, instead of trying to find the things uh, that the world have told you to find, uh, but you give your life to me. He said, lose your life uh, and give it to me. He said, those that lose their life, they will find it in me. Oh, because the heart is inconsistent, but God is not. Glory to God. Now, happiness, you can find it, and it would, it would change because something can happen, and that happiness switch. 
Oh, but when you have joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's what builds you up. That's where that stability comes in. Glory to God. How can we build anything if we don't have stability? Glory to God. Matthew 7, 24, when he was had given the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus was speaking, he said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and act on them, glory to God. They just like that wise man that built a house. Hallelujah. Or like the man that built the house and the rain came and the rain fell and did everything. But his house stood still. It stood firm because it was beaten down, beaten down, but it was built on the solid foundation. Glory to God. But the man, the foolish one that built the house upon the sand. And you know, when the water hit the sand, sand moves. Oh, but when the when the water came down and beat on top of the house and then the water seeped down under the house, the house did fall. And he didn't say the house fell only. He said it had a great fall. So the house fell greatly because it was not built on the firm foundation. So listen, hallelujah, and obey the teachings of the Lord and stand on a firm foundation. Don't be like the foolish man, hallelujah, and then just follow your heart and seek after the things that the world has told us to seek after it. Oh, but follow the things of God and seek after him, glory to God, and he will have you on a firm foundation no matter how hard the trials become, no matter how hard the test is, but you will stand firm on that firm foundation. Oh, glory to God. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it's so, so important so important because the worldly values, uh, yes, it can be very, very enticing. It can be so enticing. Oh, glory to God, because see, it just looked like it's so attractive. It looked like it's just so good. I know so many churches, so many uh, speakers that are just blowing up, that are speaking the same gospel that's been preaching down through the years, and people act like it's a new revelation right that's not new that's that's been preached for many many years and like wow that's profound oh I, yes the word of god itself is profound but just because you see some young preacher that's saying the word that's been spoken through the elders all these years like it sounds better because it's coming from them you know because people have uh, glamorized it in certain people but no the word of god is the word of god just make sure it lines up with what god has said already so if it's lining up with the word then you know it is the real truth glory to god but don't be deceived hallelujah but you can believe this thing or not in second timothy 4 and 3 oh, glory to god he said for the time will come when they will not endure or they will not in listen to sound doctrine but wanting to hear their ears tickled they want their ears to be tickled they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside the myths so paul is telling us to spend our entire lives searching the truth that lines up because people what what they're doing they want to find it to line up with their lifestyle not with the word of God, but with what they're doing. So if, it's, if the word is not lining up with what they're doing, then they don't want to hear it. They're going to go seek somewhere else to where it lines up with what they want to hear. So like, now, nah, oh, you're not saying I can do that? Oh, okay, well, let me go to this next church. So yeah, peace out. There you go. Peace out. I will see you next time. May I see you later down the road? You know, so they go and look for places that will line up with what they are doing in their life. But is it lining up with the word of God? Have you checked that? And so I, I love it when people come to me and tell me, I want to come talk to you because I know you will tell me the truth. 
You know, that's so important to me that people realize that I'm not going to water down the gospel. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it. I'm not going to try to tell you something just so you would like me and be happy with me. No, I'm going to tell you something that is going to save your soul from the burning hell. I want you to be saved. I want you to be holy. I want you to be better than what you've been. My God, I want you to grow in Christ. I want you to learn the right way. Oh, glory. Glory to God. It's so important. Hallelujah. People, come on, wake up. As I heard Overseer saying the other day when I listened to her Bible study, was saying, wake up, church. Wake up. They're sleeping. You're slumbering and sleeping. You need to wake up and hear the word of God. Glory to God. Stop being enticed by all of these things that's going on around you, hearing all these great speakers, yes, they can speak real good and they can let these scriptures roll off their tongue and, and quote all these different scriptures. Yes, it sounds real nice listening to it. My God, but you need to hear the whole thing. Make sure it's lining up with the word of God. Now in John 10 and 10, it says, a thief cometh not but to steal, kill and destroy. He said, but I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so see, we cannot be fully destroyed, but you seeking all these distractions, you will be. So we got to stand firm, stand for something or fall for anything. My God, because the word of God comes to stop us from falling for these things because the enemy is looking for you. He said, come, he come not only to steal, kill and destroy so he looking for you because he roaming, looking back and forth, trying to find someone to devour. He's trying to find someone to destroy, someone to tear down. He looking for you. You know how Uncle Sam used to say, I'm, I want you for the military. I want you. That's the enemy said, I want you. So he looking for you, me and everybody else. So he can tear you down. So he can try to steal from you. So he can try to kill you. And then he wants to destroy everything about you. So don't let it happen to you. And the way that you can keep it from happening to you is to allow the spirit of God to lead you. You want him to lead you into all truth. My God, it is so important, glory to God, to see that the values of the world is not where we want to be. That is not what we, we want to say no to those values, but we want to say yes to the values that God have for us through the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. We need the Holy Ghost to lead and guide us to all truth. I'm so thankful to God. And that's in John 14 and 17, because that's what we needed to lead us. Otherwise, we're going to make so many mistakes that we didn't have to make. Now think about this. You have the Holy Ghost. Yes, it lead and guide you. You know that little unction that you feel and it say, don't do that or don't say that. And then you override it and say it and do it anyway. Okay, you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to lead you because you just override. He said, I will not. He can't take over you and, and do anything for you if the, if the flesh man, the uh, part of you, the flesh part of you is bigger than the spirit. If the spirit is this small and the flesh is this big, guess who going to win? Glory to God. But if the flesh is this small and the spirit is this big, then the spirit will win. That's the only way you can be led by the spirit of God. So many people think, oh, I have the spirit of God. But then you look at them, you say, well, that don't line up because... You still operating in the flesh all the time. Anytime you get mad, you lose your temper and you go off on people, tell them off. Every time this happens, you still do this. Okay, you still have no control uh, at all. Something ain't right with that. So, yes, you may have the Holy Spirit, but guess what? You haven't fed them. They starving. It's, he's in starvation. So what happens when someone is starving? They can barely move. They can barely do anything. They have no strength. They can't even hardly talk. Just think about when you go on a fast, how you feel. Yes, you know exactly how that feels when or if you fast. But when you go on a <laughs> when you go on a fast, because I know how I feel. I've been on all different types of fast. I've been on day fast, I've been hour fast, I've been two days, three days and nights, I've done 
five days and nights. I think that's the longest I've been, but I've done five days and night, no nothing, no water, no, no food, no nothing. You know, so I know how that feel. By that fifth day, you can barely, you barely want to lift your arm up. You just want to just lay down somewhere, you know, but you got to force yourself and get up and wash your face like the word of God say. He said, don't appear unto man as fasting because you fast in secret. And when you fast in secret, I will reward you openly. You know, but people don't understand that about fasting. That is killing out this flesh because this flesh want to be in full control. The word of God tells us that it is a constant war between the flesh and and the spirit. And so if you don't allow the spirit of God to be fed and to grow, then your flesh will override it and the spirit of God cannot lead you. There's no way he can lead you if you're not feeding it. Glory to God. But there is abundant life in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. We got to allow that gift to do the work that it was created to do. That's why he sent us that gift. And that's exactly what it is. It's a gift. And it's a free gift that gives to you when you submit yourself to him. And then he can lead and guide you. And you want to allow all of these things to lead you astray. So you want to allow just that smooth talking when, the, when they're speaking. You want to have those itching ears to just want to hear things that make you feel good. Just hear things that make you shout, make you just want to run. And, oh, yeah, they were good because we shouted. Yeah, but what did you do after the shout? After you finish your shout, did you still be able to hold your peace? Are you still able to do the things that God has told you to do? Can you submit your ways to him and not just do your own thing, what you want to do? What are you going to do with that? Glory to God. So that's why the word said all of that shout, that bodily exercise, all those things you do profit little. That means that it don't have that much effect. Glory to God. But when you humble yourself, when you submit yourself under the hand of God, glory to God, that's when he can come in and move. That's when he can come in and cleanse you and deliver you, set you free. And then you can be led by him. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then you will be able to stand. Hallelujah. Stand firm. Glory to God on the word. And you won't give in to all of these philosophies, all of these new things, this new wave. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I believe in different things changing with the times. Oh, there's nothing wrong with changing with the times as far as having uh, different things like, you know, the different type to worship songs and how we just change it up a little bit, but nothing uh, should change when it comes to the word of God. Nothing should change uh, when it comes to being holy uh, and living right before God. Uh, that stays the same because our God, he's the same yesterday, uh, today, and forevermore. Uh, so if you change in any part uh, of the word of God, uh, he tells us in Revelation, uh, damnation will be on your soul. Uh, he said, if you add to or you take away uh, from this book, uh, oh, you can go read it for yourself. Uh, oh, my God, my God, don't change nothing. Uh, that has to do with the word of God. And if you, if you do not follow your own heart, <laughs> glory to God and do whatever make you happy. My Lord, my Lord, that is when you can allow God to do the things in your life that he wants to do, not what you want to do. See, if I will follow my heart, my mind, you know, what if I want to be a supermodel? Listen. That ain't happening. Not happening. So I can't do that. God, if I want to follow my heart. Oh, I want to be this. So I, you know, I, you can't do that. So I'm not saying that you can't make dreams and visions that you love to do. Yes, that's good. But see if it aligns with what God has for you to do. Because I remember, and I, I was just talking about this recently, about how I wanted to be a police officer and how I wanted to be go to the military. And my mother, Overseer Ian Williams, talked me out of it. She was like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And you know, you young, you 18, you're impressionable and you wanna, you wanna please your parents and you wanna do what your parents have for you to do. And I, I really did not, I didn't wanna listen to her. I did not wanna hear that. I'm like, no, I wanna be a police officer. And then I was like, no, if I can't do the police officer thing, I wanna go to the military. She said, no, I don't think that's a good idea because that don't align. You you probably never get saved if you do that. Yeah, I'm like, 
What they got to do with anything? I know what I, <laughs> I don't want to follow my heart. I want to do this. What they got to do with me being saved? You know, of course, I wasn't saved at the time. You know, so I'm thinking, how you going to try to plan my life and I'm going to be being saved? But see, she was looking ahead. She wasn't looking at the right now like what we do most times. We're looking at right now. But see, she saw far ahead before I could see it. I had no idea. I was mad about it for a little while, but I went on. I obeyed my mother and I stepped back. She's gone going to hair. But because I went into hair and I was obedient to what she told me to do, then God blessed my life. So I was, I got saved that very next year and have not turned back yet. And that's been since 19 years old, you know, so God would have you to be led because if you listen though, so you can listen to the wrong people and take the wrong path. And then you will never get to your real destiny where God is taking you. If you don't listen, cause we have a choice. God gave us a choice. And we can decide whether to follow him or not. And so by me taking that different path, I was able to do, I had, I had a lot of experiences in my life. They weren't all good either, but I thank God for my experiences because they brought me to where I am right now today. And so we have to trust that God is taking us in the right direction. He will take us in the right uh, areas where we need to go, even the feel of where you're supposed to work. That's how God operate if we listen and stand firm for what you believe in. And I just thank God. I thank God for this word. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand. And I'm so thankful to God for the word on today. I'm thankful to what he is doing. Amen. To each, for each and every one. I'm thankful to those who have listened or uh, that listened to this word on today, I surely hope that I've said something that has helped you on today and that will cause you to want to change and to do better and to stand firm for what you believe in. Stand firm on the things you've been taught since you were a child. You, if you wasn't taught that when you were a child, it's a time to start learning. It's never too late to learn about God, to learn, to get in his word and read it and study and show yourself approved after you have studied and learned that word. God will do it for you. And I thank God once again, amen, for everyone. And until next time, we will see you. I'm going to close out with prayer and just bless the people of God. Father, I thank you right now for those that will hear this word on today. God, I ask that you will just touch their hearts and their souls and their minds, God, and bring them closer to you, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you for each and every one that's watched that ha has not given their life to you, God. Lord, I ask that you would pull Pull on their hearts, God. Pull on them, God, that they may want to serve you and say yes to your will. And just all you have to do, if you want to give your life to him, just say, Lord Jesus, oh God, forgive me of my sins. I love you, God. I want to live for you. Oh, forgive me of everything I've done. Oh God, I ask that you will come into my heart. I believe, Jesus, that you came, you died, you suffered, bled for my sins. And Lord, that you rose again on the third day. And I know, God, hallelujah, that you're coming again for me. And I give my life to you on today. Oh, Oh God, in Jesus' name, I'm saved. Oh God, I thank you for new, new soldiers that are coming in to the work. God, we give you the glory. We give you the and amen. Amen. Come on.